on this episode of the Ever One Podcast, Scott flies solo, talking about recent events in Alaska and celebrating his fifth wedding anniversary, along with tying in an interview, finally, with our buddy Dan, the voice you hear introducing us at the beginning of our episodes. Cue the music. And now, podcasting from the great city of Anchorage, Alaska, in the largest state in the country, this is the Upper One Podcast with your hosts, Scott and Eric. Hey, y'all. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Upper One Podcast. I know it's been a while. November seemed like a long time ago since our last episode. This is Scott. I am going to run a solo one today just to get things started on this new year. Today being March 17th, our first episode was published a year ago in just a few days on March 23rd. So uh, maybe we'll just start this as the second season, first episode of the second season of the Upper One Podcast. I don't even know what episode we're on, maybe 18 or 19, something like that. It's been a long battle getting these podcasts out, being able to get together this last year through this pandemic to, you know, find time to record. It's been uh, a challenge. Another challenge has been life getting in the way uh, outside of the pandemic. As we had said before, you know, we, we lost a member of the family and some other things gotten in the way. So as of now, uh, the Upper One Podcast is just going to be Eric and I. Uh, Tim's decided to step away to handle some other things, uh, you know, and take care of life. You know, we're, we're not going to have that third voice and the knowledge uh, there alongside us. So um, I just wanted to start, with, like I said, today's March 17th. It's been almost a year since we've uploaded our first podcast. I thought I'd do things a little bit different, like uh, I don't want to go long and drawn out, but uh, just some history, you know, everybody knows today's St. Patrick's Day. It's some country music history, and I'm going to get to the reasoning why I'm doing this one specific thing in a minute for those of you that don't know. On today, March 17th, 1956, everybody knows Heartbreak Hotel, Elvis Presley. March 17th, 1956, that song hit number one on the Billboard charts. The reason why I use that as today, the reason being is because not only is today St. Patrick's Day, today is my fifth anniversary. I've been married five years. My wife, Shanna, and I, we got married on St. Patrick's Day. We got married in Vegas. We got married at the Graceland Wedding Chapel in Las Vegas by an Elvis impersonator. So that's why I brought that up. Happy anniversary, Shanna. I love you. For those of you that don't know, those of you who weren't there, it was a blast. Um, You know how Vegas, Vegas is a show. Couldn't have thought of a better place to to get married than at Graceland and uh, drinking our St. Patrick's Day wedding drink. So with that being said, moving on, let's just do a little quick rundown before I babble too much. You know, with, with things being shut down, you know, we've been limited on what we can do. In February in Alaska, we have, well, in Anchorage, we have the Fur Rendezvous Carnival and uh, Celebration, which is our, our winter carnival, winter, whatever you want to call it, party, celebrations. There's lots of things that normally happen, which I pr- participated in the Fur Rendezvous um, Poker Tournament. The winner of that tournament gets a seat to the World Series of Poker main event. There's all kinds of other things. The Miners and Trappers Ball, the Beard and Mustache Contest, the Carnival's always going on. I, I'd never gone downtown this year, so I didn't see what was all there as we were limited to what we could do. They did do the Snow Sculptures, which I have participated in in the past of a company 2005 that I worked for. We did a carving, so I got to participate in the help of creating that. That happened this year again. The traditional... Iditarod start, which usually happens right around the end of Fur Rendezvous, that Anchorage to Eagle River traditional ceremonial start did not happen this year. I did myself. I entered for the first time ever a photo into the amateur photo contest. Unfortunately, I didn't even receive honorable mention. Just gives me some things to to work on next time if I decide to do that. 
It was kind of cool. My daughter was excited because the picture was of her. Well, staying with Ferrandi, another thing that usually happens that the wife and I have done the last several years is we attend the melodrama, you know, and, and uh, melodrama to me is, is a stage performance. It's kooky, fun. Um, I have a very good friend of mine, which ties into this because... Um, he, he participates in that melodrama. Why it ties into today is because uh, actually tomorrow is his anniversary. When the wife and I originally were going to Vegas, we were going down for his wedding. That was planned in advance. And then that's when we decided while we were down there we should get married to and we did. There's some story behind that also as well. Coincidentally, my buddy's name is Scott also, and uh, uh, one of the things that I did before I even told my parents or anybody else that we were going to get married was, you know, I, I wanted to let him know that we had decided we were going to do that, but at the same time, I wanted to tell him that I didn't want this to overshadow any of his special moment, so I called to talk to him about it, and he was really cool about it. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, most of the people that were down there from Alaska, I mean, we're all friends, but we're all poker buddies too. Scott's one of my poker buddies. We've competed for the chance to win that Ferrandi poker seat, poker tournament seat. So a lot of those friends that came down from Alaska are my friends as well. They were invited to uh, show up for our wedding. And uh, Mr. Mr. Scott, he tried so hard, God bless his soul, that he wanted to show up to be there. And uh, unfortunately, I think he made the mistake of going to the wrong Costco to get alcohol for, I think it was alcohol, for something. He was going to Costco and he went to the wrong one. And so by the time he got to the right one, he couldn't get back to make it. I still love you, Scott. So yeah, their, their anniversary is tomorrow, the 18th. So happy anniversary, Scott and Molly. But anyways, Scott participates in this melodrama. I can't remember. It's been 11 or 12, maybe 13 years that he's been involved in it. And with 2020 being the first one that he actually missed because, you know, his anniversary trip kind of fell within those dates. But this year was different as well because they put it on virtually and it, it, it changed a whole lot of things. It, it was different because at this melodrama, when we have it during Ferrandi, you go sit up and you're up close and personal at the stage. Uh, the stage is in front of all the seats and then just 45 degrees to your right of the stage is the choir, which is Alaska Sound Celebration Choir. Those ladies do an excellent job. Well, during the Ferrandi melodrama you will the audience participates as well and what they do is they pass out these if you remember back in school you get that little bag of popcorn well you buy bags of popcorn and then you take your program and then you roll it up into a cone fill it with popcorn and you flick it at the actors in their direction while they're standing on the stage acting well this year things were different they did that show virtually so there were no in-person uh, spectators but with that being said, our assembly has changed up their emergency orders. They've sort of loosened regulations. They've opened things back up to limited capacities, uh, whether you wear a mask or not. Um, pretty much the masks are still in order, but high school sports is happening now. Uh, I believe regular season for high school basketball just finished up last night. They're allowing spectators, and I believe it is two spectators per participant. Um, I don't know those specifics, but, but that's exciting to know. Um, as well as, I believe, every grade from kindergarten through 12th grade is back in school finally now. They, they just, uh, just in-person learning for the high school just started this week. So that's, that's exciting. Things are going great with that. More activities. The Iron Dog Snow Machine Race uh, happened back in February. Um, you know, as Eric and I were both, we're, we're both uh, like riding uh, snow machines or sleds, and we follow the we follow the Iron Dog every year. Some weird stuff happened with the finish of this year's Iron Dog. The team that won, which is Team Six, Robbie. I want to say this without butchering. I, I want to say Shackle and Brad George. They were team six. They won it. Well, what happened was they crossed the finish line thinking they were second because there was a team ahead of them, uh, team 14 of Casey Boylan, mm -hmm. Boylan sorry, and Brian Leslie. They had about a 30-minute lead ahead of them. Well, apparently there were some breakdowns and they were towing. One, you know, one guy was towing his partner 
and locked up engines so they broke down towing they kind of took a side trail which they mistook for the race trail which kind of screwed them up and team six rode on by and ended up winning so uh yeah team six won the iron dog and then um like i said earlier for ferrandi the uh iditarod did not have its ceremonial start in anchorage which eric and i have and his family we've all um you know gone down and watched you know dd john Rowe when she was starting or when she was still racing and uh, it would have been nice to have watched uh, one of my favorites now that dd has gone was ali zirkel uh, I, i've been pulling for her since dd retired but it would have been nice to go watch her start her final i did her odd this year ali ali decided she was hanging it up as well unfortunately for her she she scratched out of the race with some health problems and i don't remember what it was but ali ali was uh, one of my favorites so uh Anyways, the Iditarod did just finish a few days ago. Dallas Seavey just tied the record for the most wins with five, tying that record with Rick Swenson. Uh, he finished on the 15th. He finished at 5.08 in the morning. This Iditarod this year was a little weird. Instead of going, you know, like Hobo Jim's song says, the, the race was run from Anchorage to Nome. Well, they did not run to Nome this year. What they did was they, they ran from Deshka Landing up to Iditarod and turned around and came back. Dallas winning his fifth. Uh, championship and uh, there's a guy he finished ninth his name is Richie Deal he's actually the cousin or engaged to the cousin of one of my friends uh, Reed McDonald who's the owner of the brewery I, I hang out with and Reed's also the president of my hockey league and also one of the one of the main voices on the Dump and Change podcast. Shout out to those boys. But anyways, uh, the story about Richie, and you can find it online, is the Odd Man Rush brewed a raw IPA beer called The Real Deal, R-E-A-L, D-I-E-H-L for Richie's last name, Deal. A raw IPA means that when you're in the process of making beer, you do not boil the ingredients. You don't get it up to boiling. You just get it up to 180 degrees, which still pasteurizes everything thing and then you start the process from there uh so it, it's called a raw ipa but they they brewed one in his name and anyways uh they got some sponsorship for him for the iditarod but but richie unfortunately he was running really good there for a while he was up into third he was you know hanging around third and fifth but he ended up i think because he lost some sled dogs or something and based on where he took his what are they called the uh layovers there, there's an eight hour a mandatory eight hour and a mandatory 24 hour layover and, and i think some of that tied into him falling back a little and finishing ninth as of right now when i pulled up this iditarod web page there's seven people still on the trail 36 mushers total and it looks like 10 people have scratched from the race so one of the cool things is the red lantern award which is awarded to the last musher that finishes the race under the arches but Unfortunately, it won't be under the arches in Nome this year because, like I said, they turned around and came back. But um, seven people still on the trail. The Iditarod is pretty much done with the winner. Dallas CV, congratulations. Now, getting back to something I did forget since I, I remembered because we were talking about Odd Man Rush. One of the other activities and par participation things at the uh, for Rendezvous is the running with the reindeer. And don't quote me on this. Some other people have asked me if this is true or not, but the Honorable Bob Lester from 1065 k -Well and Alaska Aces Hall of Fame announcer, people have asked me if he's the one that started this because, uh, you know, the, the running with the bulls over in, in Spain, they thought, why don't we why don't we start something that's, that's like that that's Alaska themed? And so uh, I don't remember how long ago, five, six, seven years ago eight years ago maybe, uh, they started the running with the reindeer downtown in Anchorage and they bring actual reindeer from the reindeer farm out in Palmer and they let them run with people, you know, they pay the entrance fees and run a couple blocks down the street and then they let the reindeer come and run through you. And another friend of mine who's also named Scott, last year for 2020 in February, Odd Man Rush sponsored him uh, with some help from our friend Tom put on a Odd Man Rush hockey jersey and a hockey helmet with a, a GoPro pointed back at Scotty's face. And uh, he ran down the road in the snow with the reindeer. And so with that event being canceled this year, uh, Odd Man Rush Brewery, they made their own little thing uh, where, you, you know, you pay your entrance fees and, and all the proceeds of those monies, they were donated to for rendezvous. Well, it was called Running with Scotty. And uh, I believe if you go to the 
Odd Man Rush webpage, you can see all the shenanigans that some of those guys did leading up to this. Well, it was fun. I participated in it. I didn't have fun running just three tenths of a mile. I would have rather been on the ice for a two minute shift. But there was also some rewards for running. Uh, they had brewed a specific tangerine wheat beer for Scotty. They called it the Fruity Moody. It's pretty good. So, anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's been what's been going on. Again. Happy anniversary to Shanna. This is something that I'm very, very proud to have gotten to and and where we're at. With that being said, several weeks ago, Eric and I did get the chance to to have a little conversation with our buddy Dan. As you as you know, um, Dan used to live up here. He used to be a radio personality. He's still in radio. He's taken a couple of, well, one that I can remember, career change where he was selling cars and stuff like that. But we, we talk about that in this interview. Eric and I sat down with him and we talked a little bit, had some fun with each other. And uh, But Dan's the guy that does our intro, for those of you that don't know. With that being said, let me get to that interview, and then we will to call it a day. We've got a very special guest on the Everyone Podcast right now, all the way from Idaho Falls, Idaho, our buddy Dan that does our intro. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm glad right. to see you. Yay! <laughs> I got Dan on the phone. The old goat. Hold on, did he just say, I'm glad to see you? Yes, he did say, glad to see you. Hey, okay. <laughs> see you, hear you, either way. Well, trying to follow along, making yeah. sure I can keep up. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you can keep up. He's probably at a snail pace, so. Yeah. Anyways, hey, this is the first time we've got you on here. And, you know, when I asked you to do our intro, man, I, I didn't know how you are going to do it, but... You know, we're ecstatic that you did that for us, and I still, to this day, I appreciate what you did. We really did. You a little super extreme radio guy, kind of. <laughs> yeah, well, so we really appreciate what you've done for us. Well, speaking of radio, all these years that I've known you, there was a couple times where you were the janitor on that rock station, but everything's always been country, so why the change now? They, uh, my current employer just wanted to do something different on the country station that I was working at. So they asked me if I'd move over to our, uh, our hot AC and, you know, I play a lot of Justin Bieber now. And oh Justin my Timberlake. God. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm a, I am a fan of music. So, um, you know, I do enjoy country the most because of the story for, for the most part, but, um, I'm a fan of all music, so it's not really that big of a deal. Amen to that, I'm, man. I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of Palsy. Pink is probably one of my favorite artists of all time. Pink. Um, yep, I get so I get to play a lot of that stuff, and and I enjoy it. And then I also do a, a small shift on our classic hit station, where I get to play a bunch of uh, '60s, '70s, and '80s music, which is really cool. Nice. Well, here's You're playing my... some Kiss, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All well, right. here's actually, here's here's the thing. Actually, just so I have I have listened to him on through the 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 radio's website. I've listened to him live, and and I'm sure you can still do that, right? Yeah. So we'll have to we'll have to figure out when we can listen to him, and and we'll get the the times and all that on. But my question is, when you started up here, you were the afternoon guy, and the day that we met, I said I listened to the other guy because he's my softball teammate. But eventually right. you moved from afternoons to mornings. Didn't didn't that just happen before you got moved to the, the other? Uh, yeah. So back in July, there was another another change. Um, you know, COVID is really revenue in many industries is way down. And, and the radio industry is the same thing. So, um, you know, we took a hit with lots of personnel. So that's what uh, eventually moved me two mornings and also what eventually moved me off of mornings to a different radio station. Well, I know you're we're, having we're a blast. You're having a blast. And, and I, I'm so glad you're back on the radio that I can always turn you on and hear you whenever I want to, but it's always better than selling cars. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Hey, uh, speaking of selling cars coming up this weekend is the Super Bowl, And the guy sitting across from me is just, doing backflips because you're not the only goat around here. That's right. We got a goat on the field for us. Yeah. He's, he's, you know, I spent what? 15, how, how long has he been playing now? My goodness. What are you in? 20 years? 20, 20 years. Yeah. I spent 
I spent probably the first 13, 14 years hating him. And then the older I got, it was like, you know what? I'm, you can talk deflate gay. You can talk she. You can listen. If that's all you have, you're missing out because Tom Brady is, we're able to watch and witness arguably the, one of the greatest pro athletes of, of our time. And, Amen. And, and before Amen. you guys say anything else, I will be the first to second that because I have been a Tom Brady hater. But I've never ever discounted an athlete's skills, so that's right. that's my my you know sure, comeback you know, on that is I've I, Tom Grady is the best. I, I, I'm not going to deny that. I am not saying that you have to like him, but if you can't even admit that, listen, what this guy done has has created uh, a generation of difference makers in yes. football, and what he is doing at 43 is crazy. I, I've, crazy. I've been playing hockey at 46, and yeah. even... If that's what you want to call it. <laughs> well, I yeah. don't have the box of crayons like you do. Right. But anyways, yeah. you know, if I could if I could play half to the level of what he's playing at right now, I would be the best player in the league, and I wouldn't be playing in the lowest league when we do play hockey. But what I was getting at is, so the Super Bowl's coming up, and you were a car salesman, and you did a Super Bowl commercial several years ago. Right. So that's kind of exciting to know. But at the same time, you know, we got all this other stuff going on. And, and you know, they're not allowing the, the fans to blow the cannons off. But right. You, Which uh, I think is wrong. If you earn the right to be in the Super Bowl in your home stadium, you should get the home field advantage. If you work that hard and you earn that yeah. right, I believe your home stadium you should have the right to do what you're going to do. But then at the other, on the other hand, I do understand that there are teams that don't get the opportunity to have the Super Bowl in their stadium, say Green Bay or someplace, because they know that in February, it's too cold. The weather is yeah. not going to be... That'd be fun to watch, though. So my question is... They should allow them to blast the cannons for the Buccaneers. <laughs> my next question is being, you know, being down there in Idaho... And being where you're at, uh, especially with what you, you've done while you were up here, are you going to a lot of rodeos? Are you seeing any of that? Uh, I haven't been to an outdoor event. The, the last outdoor event that I went to was, uh, or any event I should say, was Miranda Lambert in February, and that was in Salt Lake City. That was Miranda, Cody, and Lanco, Cody Johnson. A year ago. Oh, yeah, I love her too. <laughs> February nineteenth, I want to say. Yeah. So, you remember our old buddy Frank Koloski? Mm -hmm. Well, today's his birthday, and I've been trying to get him on the phone to tell him happy birthday. But um, apparently, a few weeks ago, he got a phone call from Colorado Springs, and the PRCA is wanting to do a joint thing with him Memorial Day weekend. And apparently they're bringing up 40-some bull riders for the PRCA to have an event up here Memorial Day weekend. So he, he's oh, pretty stoked cool. about that, yeah. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully by the time we air this, we'll have him on and we'll be able to, you know, to get everything lined in. Yeah, but, that, uh, that, would be, that would be really cool. I, uh, I miss outdoor events. I miss, I miss indoor events. I miss, uh, you know, and here in, in where I'm at in eastern Idaho, uh, it's kind of really business as usual with the exception of we don't have any events, you know, all of our businesses are open. You can go into restaurants, you know, seating is limited and stuff like that. But Well, that's all right. Uh, we miss you too, Goat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I heard you mention us, but uh, we miss you too. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time, and I, 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 uh, I hope that one yeah, day. Yeah, 2014 was the last time I was up there. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think I had the guitar that day. Yeah, well, it, I asked him to put it away. <laughs> well, now <laughs> I ask him to do that when he comes into my sound room. He, no, just put the guitar down. He he, he only asked me to put it down because I play better than him. But now yeah, I, okay. I play a lot better than I did back then. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah. well, right we're we're glad we can finally get you on here. And I know it's just been a couple minutes, and you just got done doing the dishes. But uh, yep. it's always good times catching up with you. We got some old friends that I've caught back up with up here. And I'm hoping once once things get back to what our, our normal is going to be that, uh, you know, one day you'll be back up here and we'll be able to have a, a fiesta. 
Well, that would be fun. I would enjoy that. So, anyways, I'm going to I'm going to hit the stop button here before we end this phone call. But thanks again for being on, and and thanks for being our our intro and and uh, doing what you did for us. Yes, thank you very much, and uh, no worries. Definitely look forward to getting to get together with you again real soon. Yeah, hopefully sometime within the next ten years. So ten years in between time and seeing that guy is too long. Uh, it's always good times hanging out with him, and I hope it's sooner than 10 years. Goat, we love you. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for being a very good friend, and it's going to happen again. Uh, just the update, the Bulls coming up, uh, PRCA, Rodeo Alaska, the weekend of May 28th, 29th, and 30th. That's Memorial Day weekend at the Alaska State Fairgrounds in Palmer. I'm hoping I can get Frank on here to update us knuckleheads on the correct information, but I do know that stock contractors associated with the PRCA are bringing bulls up here. They've done it before. They'll do it again. we got some big bulls coming. It's going to be a great weekend, along with live performance from William Michael Morgan. Can't wait. Once again, this is Scott flying solo today from high in the Eagle River Valley in Eagle River, Alaska. And I'm sipping on a cold Odd Man Rush 10 ply IPA. Uh, it's my favorite brewery. Anyways, uh, like us and share us on Facebook, uh, Upper One Podcast. Um, I think you can search the at Upper One Podcast and it'll bring it, pop it right up. But it is a Facebook page. Uh, you know, we want to get us out there. And we will answer questions. We will talk about what you want to know. If you've never been here, let us know. Until then, like I said, flying high solo in the Eagle River Valley, Eagle River, Alaska. This is Scott. We will talk at you next time. Thanks for listening.